Elementary, good luck breakfast. The team ate well and kept things light, trying to avoid the pressure and tightness resulting from thinking of the awesome tasks that lie ahead. The coaching staff, one of the youngest ever assembled for a championship game, seemed too preoccupied to enjoy the morning meal. After breakfast on that crisp December morning, the team members gathered slowly at the Gresham High School locker room. Here the preparation and thinking became more intense. Time for taping. Time for loosening up. and reading up. They had all done this many times before, but this time it was different. This time it seems the whole state had its eye on them, a team that hadn't even made the playoffs a year ago. After taping, each of the coaches meet with their small groups of players and talk about specifics. Here the work begins in earnest. So basically, that's what we have in mind in that pro formation. It's a little bit like Mountain View. They got to make a decision what they're doing, and I think our tackles can handle their tackles one way or the other. Their tackles are not the strength of their defense. Okay, now if he's playing this defensive end spot over here, uh, now we got the advantage of this side. They cannot cover the flat in passing. They don't have a, a, a corner force situation on, on a sweep or, or our option. They're in, you know, the same thing. Read to this side also looks good. You know, we read it. We read in the end. And, you know, we can block this any way we want. We can switch it here or, you know, just go, go normal on the thing. But there again, this guy, if this guy's coming from the deep middle making the play, then it's going to open a lot of things up as far as throwing the ball. And, you know, I don't see how he can do that. You know, he may play over here. We may come back to the backside on a, on a goal post situation where we're just dragging the thing and hitting it quick. Short post back to the side. At the same time, other parts of the school begin to stir with anticipation. Even getting to the championship game is a rare occasion in any school's history, and the Gophers were going after it with gusto and style. Groups that had been with the team all season band, rally, and rhythmettes would soon be on their way to Civic Stadium. At 11 a.m., the word comes that the team buses are waiting. The players, fresh from their chalk talks, take the long walk to the buses in silence, thinking, memorizing, concentrating. The team receives a police escort to the city limits, as if the city's show of support were not evident all over town. Marquees, signs, banners, all with one thought. Go get them, Gophers. After a short ride into downtown Portland, the team buses unload at the back gate of Civic Stadium, and warm-ups begin. All week, head coach Gary Stotts was a hot press item, and this day was no different. Here was a rookie head coach, around 30 years old, at the pinnacle of OSAA competition. His team had overcome tremendous odds to defeat two teams considered by experts to be the most powerful in the state, the Pacers of Lake Ridge and Medford's Black Tornado. The Gophers had battled their way into the championship game with Lebanon, the game set for 1 p.m. December 4th at Civic Stadium. The teams and the time were at hand. 
At the ticket gates, the city's show of support continued. Merchants closed shops. People set aside family plans. No one was going to miss this one. Gresham is a football town, and they were out to prove it. Around 15,000 fans had shown up to cheer the players. That translates into electricity on the floor of Civic Stadium. Time for just one more word of encouragement in the catacombs below Civic Stadium, and the talking would end and the hitting begin. No one tells the complete story better than network affiliate news and Channel 8's Al Keck. In many ways, this was a classic matchup for a state title game. On one hand, you have Lebanon, a team hoping for a second chance. Remember, it was here a year ago in Las to Roseburg. And the Warriors are the only undefeated team in the state. On the other hand, you have Gresham, a team of giant killers, a team that has a habit of beating the undefeated. And believe me, both schools and both teams were ready for this ball game. More than 15,000 fans turned out on this beautiful December afternoon for the 40th annual AAA championship game. It seemed like most of the cities of Gresham and Lebanon were crammed into Civic Stadium. Both teams had been known for their defense during the playoffs, and that was certainly the case early in the opening period. Later in the quarter, the Lebanon offense started to hum. Cliff Walker to Eric Denny, 12 yards to the Gresham 49. From there, the Warriors went to their big fullback, Bo Yates, and he turned it on. 49 yards for the touchdown. All of a sudden, it was 6-0 Lebanon. But on the point after, Yates missed wide left. Now remember that miss, because it would come back to haunt the Warriors. Gresham returned the favor on the ensuing drive. The Gophers took it 62 yards in six plays. Two key runs, this 19-yarder by quarterback Tom Eubanks, and this scoring jaunt by Darren Humphreys. It was a work of art. 29 yards to tie the game at six. Meanwhile, Todd Ronson put the Gophers on top with the point after, and Gresham led 7-6 late in the opening period. In the second period, the defenses took over. The Gophers drove inside the Lebanon 35 twice, only to give the ball up. This on fine defensive play by Vance Hedlund and Phil Wimmer. And the half ended with the scoreless second period, and the Gophers leading 7-6. After the 7-6 halftime score, things heated up in the third period. And it became a classic example of whatever you can do, I can do better. It all started on the second play from scrimmage. Yates with the fumble, and the Gophers' Steve Belmore recovers. The Gophers were not about to let an opportunity like this slip away. Two plays later, it was Humphreys again. Excellent line blocking, 21 yards for the touchdown. The point after was blocked, 13-6 Gophers. But this time, it was Lebanon that came back. 62 yards in 10 plays, Walker with the final 13. But again, the point after was wide to the left, so Gresham held on to the lead at 13-12. The fourth period belonged to the Gresham defense. It did not give ground. The Warriors had one final try, but Jim Gosnell picked off a Walker pass and ensured the 13-12 victory along with the state championship.
you once again. We just want to thank you for all you've done for us this year. You pulled us through a lot. You brought us a lot closer together. You made us the boys the men. And we thank you. We thank for the minimal injuries. And Godspeed to Gabe Gomez and his healing. Just one more time, thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen.